While Jeff is busy doing his thing, I'd like to introduce you to Third Pour, the episode that's dedicated to only one thing, Ardbeg. Mm. Give me the Ardbeg! Where did you get this Ardbeg bottle? I swear. Mm. Today is second pour. Second pour. Look, I can count one, three, two, Three. So today's second pour. That's yes, right. So today's gonna be second pour. What, what are we what are we pouring? We are pouring Red Breast 12 Irish whiskey. I already have some in here. I mean, that was a terrible accent. Oh my god. Was that your best Irish accent? You want to try that again? <laughs> well, I gotta start with Father O'Malley. <laughs> Needs Father O'Malley to come. Father back O'Malley, I can tell him down. right now. He, you know, I need can to come over here and sit down again on his on his stool. Yeah. Okay, so we're doing Red Breast. We're doing Red Breast. This is our 12, the 12 year. This is the 12 year, so I think this is their kind of their standard yes. low end. I don't know if we can call 12 year uh, whiskey bad. Ah, uh, it shouldn't be. We don't. But because it is, um, let's say it's not an American bourbon, right? Straight up. Irish. It's Irish, <laughs> which which means they can do things more like. Um, they can get away with a lot. Like a Scotch whiskey does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so therefore a 12 year, um, and where it's bottled, who knows? It actually could be quite young for it. Oh, you're right, because we've actually looked online yeah. and saw there was, what, a 27 year? There's a 500 pound bottle. Of 27 year. Red breast. Irish whiskey. The official, like, listed notes. Okay, so their official notes say something around nutty, rich, and oily. Okay, so the, the oily the is obvious. Uh, maybe some ginger, some linseed oil, okay. um, some fruity aromas. On so then when you drink it, you get kind of a little bit of a nutty citrus taste. So these are the things that we should be maybe picking up. A little bit of dried fruit, stuff like that. Yeah. And then the finish is somewhere be very creamy, kind of custardy, spicy, but it's not real spicy. Now, I mean, obviously we've tasted it because of this episode. That's right, so we had we already reviewed this, episode, this a little bit on our episode on Whiskey Pop. You click on that yeah. right here. Yeah, so it, but, it's not necessarily spicy, but no. I can see what they would say creamy. Oh, it's smooth creamy, right? Yeah, I need to have some poured in my glass. Oh, he does need some poured in his glass. Let's do that. Now, this is second pour, but it's third pour Friday for you. Yeah, actually, this is the fourth pour of this particular whiskey because I snuck some earlier. I was wondering <clears throat> why that bottle felt lighter. Now, let's take our opinions of what we actually like about it and throw them out the window. Let's pretend like I haven't tried it. That's going to be hard to do. I know, right? Because I'm really wanting to drink some more of it. Okay, let's check the nose. All right, let's check the nose. I smell the sweet immediately. The sweet is the one thing that stands out the most with this. I mean, I think... But, I mean, how much Irish whiskey have you had? Uh, well, I've had quite a bit. Okay. But compared to everything else, it'd be very small. Okay, and I would, I, I'm in the same way, but I think most Irish whiskey I've had has that kind of sweet yeah. aroma on the front. I think it's because there's a lot of Irish whiskeys and stuff that still, they do a lot of things like curing and, and port or cast barrels or, or some other type of a... And you're dead on with this and they do this in a sherry cask. Okay, so there you go. So that kind of gives you that sweet. You can really smell that fruity, sherry smell when you you smell through the glass. You just get the aroma of that. I mean, you could, you know, some whiskeys, you can't stick your nose in the glass. It just kind of burns, right? Right, absolutely. That is not happening with this, this glass. So let's do the whole take the sip, leave the mouth open, try to inhale through nose and mouth simultaneously to oh. have it blow up in our mouth. Okay, let's do that. And not cough. COVID. COVID. Also, it helps if you look to the sky while tasting. Oh. 
See, I pick up the nutty flavor. Yep, right out the front, right? Yes. Yep. It's and and then and it's followed with an oak and a sweet oak, though it's not a. And then the finish takes the last bit of the acidity of mm -hmm. a whiskey and kind of mellows that out till it just rolls over like a. I don't know, like a caramel almost, but it's not caramel. There, there is something sweet in there. I think you tend to, we have so much bourbon, we've had so much whiskey that we tend to drive toward butterscotch and caramel. For yeah, maybe sweets. so, yeah. Um, I don't know, I think I think a lot of that sweet you're picking up is just fruit. One thing I'm picking up though, it's like, so during Thanksgiving, we make a uh, homemade cranberry sauce. Oh, okay. Well, we, we, you know, we use orange peel to kind of zest that out. Oh. I'm tasting a little bit what I would See, think you're, is like you're, a lemony you're, you're, peel. You're, you're, you're totally sabotaging my taste now because when you said the orange peel, the and that's right because that'll happen. So when you're sitting oh, down drinking with friends yes. and somebody tastes something and they say it, you suddenly start tasting those things as well. Except for that one time when you tasted pickles, I never tasted pickles. Oh, I was right. You were right. Yeah, you were right. So definitely, it has it does have spice. I can pick it up a little bit. It's, yeah, but no. it's, not, it's only eighty. It's only eighty. Eighty percent. And it's not the spice from the alcohol. I don't think that it's what I'm getting. I think it's spice from the complications of whatever they use to mix it. Now, okay. Now, so whatever the blend is. Yeah, and this is a single pot mm -hmm. still. So that's one batch. Whiskey, so it's like, even if they have 200 barrels of this or. It all came from the same same, thing. same pot still. So that means it came from one pot still, whatever they emptied yeah, out okay. of. Okay. And I think that's also probably why it is so good. It's controlled. Yeah, I think yeah. I think it doesn't have the um, you know when they over blend. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> yeah, this is not over blending. No, I, I think that it's doing exactly what they intended to do. So I think I've seen a video recently on YouTube somewhere. If I find that link, I'll put it down below um, where they went to Red Breast and you can see the pot stills and that process a little bit. And it, it they it's intended. Their intention is for it to be like this and to be this smooth and this controlled and yeah. exact. But I think I mean, that's a lot of bourbon whiskey, you know, scotch slash course. Irish whiskey makers. They want it to be exact. They want that experience always to be there. Now, I'm interested in what you think. More so, how do you feel like this rates in your life of everyday drinking whiskey? I'm afraid that this could find a place in a decanter at home. I'm afraid this Out is, of the vault onto the table, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm afraid this is gonna be a regular in the vault here. Yeah, I, I actually, I think it's something that I would share with guys who are not good with uh, bourbon. Yeah, they would be all over this. I think they I think they would like this. Somebody will come in there and they'll say, oh, bourbon's usually just really too hard for me to drink. It's mm -hmm. usually burns. You usually hear those are the terms you hear. I think this would be a good entry yeah. level for somebody wanting to kind of get into whiskey and not completely just I mean, we all have struggle. pacifier friends. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we all do. Yeah. Um, so. Those are the ones that drink Bud Light. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Budweiser. <laughs> At least it's not we're talking about the banquet beer, which is, uh, you know, Oh, yeah, it, the, 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 okay. the beer champions. <laughs> we're, we're going, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you straight up. I, I'm not gonna call this a four finger in our rating system. Okay, and, and let me explain some of that. We have never explained that, I don't think. So like, one finger, some of us who are drinkers know what one finger, two finger, three finger, four yeah, finger. Yeah, 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 okay. But some of you guys may be new whiskey drinkers. So one finger means like, okay, it's just one finger. It's only about that much whiskey. Two fingers, three fingers, four fingers, you're pretty much filling up a glass. Yeah. So <laughs> when, we, when we're rating these and saying one finger, two finger, we're saying this is how much we really like it because that's how much whiskey we would pour in this glass. I've actually had what would be the equivalent of five fingers. Insane. <laughs> <laughs> now, to be, but to be fair, what, within our rating system, I won't call it a four finger because uh, I like to reserve that for absolute utmost top shelf. Okay. This is a three finger that I'm gonna pour probably three fingers two times. That's six fingers. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna be straight up. I mean, Irish so whiskey is not to be thrown under the bus. So you're saying it's a three finger for you? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good. And it's I'm, real good. I'm gonna jump out there and say this might be one of those where I would throw four fingers on this. You know, 
The only thing we haven't put into consideration right now, though, is the price. Uh, 50 bucks. Damn! <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, three and a half fingers. Yeah, exactly, right? It's moving up that fourth finger real quick now, isn't it? For the price? Yeah, so I've seen, I've seen it as low as $49.99, and I've seen it as high as $57. I mean, we just saw Blanton selling for 100 bucks a bottle. And I'm telling you, this stuff is... It's enjoyable. It's, it, it, it's you will, really good. As much as you enjoy Blanton's, I'm not gonna compare the taste because it's two different taste yeah, palettes. Yeah, sure. But it, it, it's comparable. 50 bucks as opposed to 100 bucks. Mm -hmm. Now, Blanton's supposed to be 60 to $65, by the way. A MSRP, don't pay the scalping price. <laughs> <laughs> now, there is a cask strength of this out right now currently, and I've heard the cask strength is pretty phenomenal. As a bourbon drinker, that actually does make me excited. So I think that's gonna take it out from an 80 proof to like a 100 proof. So. so hey, let us know what you think about it. And I'm gonna do my best to hunt down the cask proof. And if next week or It'll the week hard, after, no uh, we have a uh, third video in the middle of the week that is the cast proof, well, that's my fault. I won't be hurt by that by any measure. But I'm just thinking I would really like to explore this particular brand of, of whiskeys. Yeah. I, I know a lot of guys who like uh, Irish whiskey usually lean towards saying Red Breast is one of their favorites. So it, it, it does have some, you know, Oh, popularity like, with it. Like the Buffalo Trace of Irish whiskey. Yeah, but it's not as hard to find as Buffalo Trace. This usually is on the shelf. Yeah, every you know, time you go out. into your whiskey place and you're like, hey, you got anything special? And they go, oh, we got Buffalo Trace. I'm like, well, shit, everybody's got Buffalo Trace. Whatever, you go to your special. How about you guys? You guys been going to liquor stores lately and you ask for something, they're like, oh, we don't have that. And then they, like, a month later have like a, a handout where everybody goes out in line and waits for four hours to get one bottle of Buffalo Trace or something goofy like that. Ridiculous. I got I got an idea, liquor stores. How about you guys just sell the liquor and sell it to your good customers instead of like making us wait out in the cold for three hours to get one. Because if you don't, I'm gonna go to the legislature and I'm gonna have grocery stores start selling whiskey. That'd be a good idea, because you know grocery stores, they, they just put it out. They don't <laughs> give a shit. <laughs> so in the meantime, you know what? If you like red breast, let us know down below. And cheers to y'all. It's going to be cool this week. And uh, cheers, right? More what are they saying in Ireland? Happy holidays to every one of you. Uh, Years right. and more. It's <laughs> that wasn't too bad. That wasn't bad. <laughs> Later, guys.